The Grow a Group Practice podcast is part of the Practice of the Practice Network, a network of podcasts seeking to help you market and grow your business and yourself. To hear other podcasts like the Practice of the Practice podcast, go to www.practiceofthepractice.com backslash network. You are listening to the Grow a Group Practice podcast, a podcast focused on helping people start, grow, and scale a group practice. Each week, you'll hear topics that are relevant to group practice owners. I'm Latoya Smith, a practice owner, and I love hearing about people's stories and real life experiences. So let's get started. Welcome back to Grow a Group Practice. I'm your host, Latoya Smith. You know, we talk about all things uh, private practice, not just how to start, build, and scale, but also other important topics, ideas, visions that'll be helpful to the listening audience if they have a group practice, one day want to have a group practice, or maybe feel stuck within their practice and want to do something a little bit different. Today's guest is Miss Camille McDaniel. I'm going to ask her to introduce herself in a moment. But you know I'm good about um, always finding people, connected with people online, because I realize there's so many great people doing wonderful things that I'll just reach out to people I've never had a conversation with before and just say, hey, this is dope. <laughs> Let's talk about it. So Camille, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy that you're on. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was, you know, before you guys, listen, the audience knows this. I have a conversation before I hit record. And um, I feel like I've, uh, Camille and I have never spoken, but I do feel like I've seen her name in so many places that uh, we have. (laughs) (laughs) But we have it. But Camille, introduce yourself to the audience. Tell them about you, what you do, where you practice, all that. Right. Okay. Well, as was introduced, I'm Camille McDaniel. I'm a licensed professional counselor here in the state of Georgia, and I have a, a group practice um, with, there are four of us in the group practice, and we serve a number of different uh, challenges in the community from abuse to um, everything else from psychosis and depression. But then I have a, another business, and that is a web design um business. And for that business, we serve mental health professionals, helping them to get their websites up, helping them to be seen online so that potential clients can find them and get the services and support that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, good. Yeah, I started, the practice started in like 2010, but the web, um, web design business started in 2017. And did you, Camille, before we jump into the web design because I think this is a good question. Did you always like, did you always know, okay, I want to branch off and do something a little bit different? Was your original vision to grow a massive practice? Like what was the vision when you started? Okay. How did it evolve? That's a great question. It's really kind of wild. My natural personality is one that is very peaceful. I have to say that first, because if I am somewhere where there is peace, where I'm content, where I'm doing what I love, I'm probably just going to rock and roll in that same place for a very long time. And it's not until things get really kind of agitate, I get agitated with maybe an environment or it's a negative thing or whatever, things that steal my peace cause me to then Mm -hmm. um, pivot. So no, I never even imagined being an entrepreneur with my own practice, nor did I ever imagine having two businesses. That was not actually the goal at all. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I started the counseling practice because the environment that I was working in just had a lot of changes. It just was not positive and peaceful like it used to be. And I said, okay, I, I can't do this for much longer. I'm going to have to do something else. And then um, that led me to kind of starting to do a little research. And then I, you know, started the, the practice that I, I have today. And for the uh, web design company, it was not a negative. It just was a, you know what? Oh, I, I'm all about now I'm in this, this entrepreneurial pool and, you know, it's different when you are having to do things for yourself, you get a little bit more creative. And I said, you know what, how can I diversify my skills? And, mm-hmm. um, and just a, like understanding that, Hey, you need some diversification, but what can you do? And I was already doing websites for myself, just for other things that I was doing and decided to move in that direction as well. But my heart and my 
I guess when you talk about like my first language is, um, you know, it's counseling. And so I stayed in that same vein to provide um, the services as far as women web design for mental health professionals, because I know mental health. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And, you know, I've been the last few guests um, or handful of the last few guests, you know, we we've had that conversation. It doesn't have to be massive practice sometimes your scaling is diversifying or branching off from what you already do yes. and launching in different areas and so I think I want to be clear like I'm glad that you shared that and said that um just to let the listening audience know it doesn't have to mean that you have to have 50 locations across the city right. as much as it, is. it could be one location like you said where you're comfortable but now you're launching in different areas like diversified income and growth. yes absolutely yep that's spot on yeah and you got that down so I'm trying um, <laughs> As you're talking, I know, you know, before we hit record, we were talking a little bit about copy and website design. And in my mind, this is a horrible connection, but I just need to, I need to show you what I feel right now. But in my mind, website, it's, it's so overwhelming to me. The website copy, it almost goes with like doing your taxes or like numbers. Like I'm not a numbers person, but it's just like, oh, like there's something about it that is so overwhelming. So and and just makes me anxious when I think about, okay, the perfect website. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Like what even got you into what, like this love and passion for website design right. for mental. Okay. So, uh, um, you know, I started again, I started really doing it for myself and, mm-hmm. um, and I just, my mind, I, I have, I'm the type of person, there are a million tabs open in my mind. I just like to, you know, delve into things that interest me. And I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. So I'm doing sites for myself and and then decide, you know, I could do this for other people as well. Because the other thing, too, is that as I'm doing the sites, I'm learning more about what is needed. You know, I, I too, was a person who thought at first, like, OK, I have to have all this information about me because people are going to come to the site and they want to know about me and why I am qualified. And so let me talk about me. And as I'm doing more research, I'm starting to realize, OK, well, you, yes, talking about yourself, that's important. But but clients aren't looking for that. This is what the research says. This is what other marketing and advertising companies do. This is why they do it. This is how they get response from the clients. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. (laughs) I never learned any of that. So what I imagined to be important based on my training as a mental health professional and being in those circles was not necessarily what I found. It was not necessarily what clients, potential clients, um, are looking for when they are trying to get help. Now, in our field as mental health professionals, you know, your your credentials and all your expertise and it's all about you is very important. People want to know about you and how, you know, and how well trained are you and this, that, the other. And it's not that clients don't look at that, uh, potential clients. But what I realized is that the focus initially after looking at the research and after kind of, you know, doing my own digging and playing around, I realized that we kind of have it a little bit backwards and in the way that we are thinking, which then kind of, I think, holds us back from maybe reaching as many people as we could reach. So then that's what kind of led me to say, well, I could do this. Let me, let me start by like letting other therapists know this is what you need to be thinking about. And and let me then start helping them and let me start doing it. And it just kind of rocked and rolled, you know, it it just kept on rolling um, as we moved along, as time moved along. Um, Yeah, that's kind of how that went. That's awesome. So it started off when you recognized, listen, I got to change even how I think about this. It's not about, let me tell you all about me, as opposed to let me speak directly to your heart. And then you started helping other people. And then you're like, hold up now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, so how does somebody get started? Maybe because it, it's called Spectrum. That's the name of the this yes. Spectrum sites. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you help people build their own sites. It's not something that you own. It's so theirs. yes, that's a, glad you asked that. We actually build sites for people, or we can consult with you to help you build a better site for yourself. Gotcha. And then if people have other needs like copy um, writing or if they have needs for like blogs, then we will provide services for that as well. And before we dive more into the website, like just explain what copy is too. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah. you know, that's also 
be confusing. Right. Because it kind of sounds all, it, basically just a technical term for saying the writing that you have, the vernacular that you use, the phrasing that you use when you are trying to explain what you have to offer. So all of that is what we call copy. It's the written format of what you are going to offer and what you want people to do whenever they show up. Got you. Okay. All right. So somebody reaches out, you know, whether they want to build a site from scratch, whether they want to consult on what they have, um, which is also very good. I hope our uh, audience, you know, has a website <laughs> and just give, even consulting because you never know, you may want to consult and then turn to you to build, but like what's first things first, what should we be looking at like to have on the site to speak to our audience besides knowing who our audience is? I imagine that's the first that's thing. That's actually <laughs> the absolute first thing. So I'm glad you said that. Okay. Right. So you already covered that. One. The first thing is know who you want to serve. It doesn't matter if you are more generalist or if you have a more narrowed niche, you need to know who you serve The reason why is because knowing who you serve is going to be the direction for your copy. You can't write copy not knowing who you want to actually um, pull into your business. So after you know who you want to serve, then the next thing is you need to identify what is important to them. Um, You know, if I... If I heard, maybe I got a referral from a friend, a a physician, whomever, however I get to you, and I have challenges with depression, and I come Mm -hmm. to your website, and all I see are pictures of kids and bubbles and, and kites and all that kind of stuff, then I'm not really clear on whether or not you serve me. Now, you, you might say you do. But then here's how the here's how our, our human mind as like um, customers or I know in our profession, we, we refer to them as clients. But let's just for like marketing advertising purposes, consumers, customers, they come. And what our mind says is, OK, someone told me that you work with individuals struggling with depression. But all I see on your website are kids and not really any mention of depression. You either focus more of your attention on kids. You are otherwise maybe better trained to serve kids. And so you might see me, but maybe you really don't have all the skill to really help me, or maybe Mm -hmm. I am a lesser focus in your practice. And that could cause people to then keep looking because nobody wants to be, if I'm coming and I have a need and it's pretty urgent, or even if it's not that urgent, I want to know that you can serve me. I don't want to be an afterthought. So Mm -hmm. when you have, you know, um, people that you want to draw into your practice, you have to make sure that in some way they can see themselves on your website. I need to see the word depression. Give me a little explanation. Help me understand that you actually do meet my need and you have what I am looking for as far as treatment support. Move on. Okay. So that being said, that first page should be the pull and the draw. So it, it, I mean, should it be, should it be a big picture of the team? Should it be a big picture of the owner or should it be, you know what I'm saying? What are you going to do on there? (laughs) Okay. That first Mm -hmm. picture, for example, my practice has, you know, there are four of us in the practice and there are certain areas where we don't cross over in skill. So if mm-hmm. you are coming for an eating disorder, you're only coming to see Aaron. If you're coming for certain sexual trauma, you're only coming to see Danielle. You know, so, so what I have on the front is a display of the main points of um, interest that we have in our practice. So when you come to that first page of the website, you are going to see that we can meet your need because it is displayed on that first page. And then if you want to learn more about the team, because now after I notice, that's the the thing, after somebody sees that you actually can treat their challenge, and let me back up and say this, Your copy needs to speak to them. It's not enough to just say, we work with depression. But but what are they saying when they're depressed? Are they saying, you know, 
I, I didn't even have enough energy for dinner last night and I feel guilty about that. Or it's, it's causing me, you know, um, challenges with relationships with others. Or are they telling you that it's taking them 30 extra minutes to get together for work because they can't even get out of bed? You know, the things that you know these individuals are saying incorporate that into your copy so that people almost like sometimes clients will be like, Oh my goodness, get out of my head. Are you in my room with me? You know, it's like, you know what I'm talking about. So therefore I feel like you can really help me. Mm -hmm. Then after that, if you want more information, that's where, you know, you, you have the general overview on your first page and maybe you have a few things that let them know you understand them because you're speaking to their issue, their challenge, and you're telling them that there's hope. And then you need to have a place where they can maybe click a button to go to another page with more information. That's where, you know, after they realize, hey, th this sounds like they really can help me. They kind of understand what I'm going through. All right. Well, now now people want to know, OK, well, who are the providers? Who are the people that are treating? Because then they want to see, can I make a connection with the people that are providing this support, this treatment? And so that's where you may have a page with your team on it. People are very mm -hmm. visual, by and large. We want to know, who am I going to be seeing? Do I feel like I can kind of vibe with the person that I'm seeing? Um, right. Some people have preferences. They feel more comfortable with a woman or a man or culturally, you know, so it's nice to then have a page where people can see who they might be actually um, coming to, to do treatment with. Yeah. And then there's other things that go along with it, like more explanation of what you do, because you may be able to go in more depth with certain pages that better explain how you can help them. And that's where I think for us as therapists, we like to put how we can help modalities of treatment all about the providers first. Yeah. But remember, people don't really know what any of that means. So you're yeah. putting it out there thinking that this is going to actually like beef up your credibility. And they just are just like, okay, but... But do you like work with kids? But do you, you know, <laughs> I don't, yeah, all the CBTs and the DBTs and the, the ABC DEFGs, like they're like, I don't know what any of that really means. Are you a practice owner, mental health or wellness professional looking to be found and trusted by the global Jewish community? Meet your ultimate solution. Okay, Clarity. OK Clarity is the exclusive online marketing and directory platform designed for both Jewish and non-Jewish professionals who want to serve the global Jewish community, fill your practice, and improve your professional brand and online presence with their all-in-one platform. OK Clarity gives you everything you need to attract your ideal clients and promote unique courses, workshops, and groups to bring to the wellness space. Starting is simple. Plans begin with the one-time setup fee of $775 and then just $20 monthly as your membership fee. And of course, you'll get an exclusive offer for Grow Group Practice listeners. Just mention Joe during your onboarding call for four months free. Join the OK Clarity community today. Visit okclarity.com forward slash professional dash membership to learn more and schedule your call with an onboarding specialist. Again, mention Joe during your onboarding call for four months free. Um, this is good. I have like a bunch of thoughts. I'm trying to write all my questions down so I don't lose them. <laughs> but, okay, so... Okay, now first things first, know who you want to speak to, then identify what's important to them, not what you think. Is it like, don't Absolutely. listen to what you said, all the trainings you've had and the courses you've taken. Like, they don't care about that, right? They want you to be qualified, mm -hmm. but they don't care about that. And then they need to actually see the words or see what they are coming for. So it's a good way to put that on the pages and then add, you know, buttons to click to just go off from there. Okay. Um, how important is it because I'm having this question. I know that you are located like in Georgia around Atlanta, right? So um, big city, right? But what if you're in a smaller market? Is it more important to see like, and if culture is an issue, is it more important to see faces as opposed to all the bigger, like, because yeah. either way, you sort of stand out, mm -hmm. 
the rest. Right, 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 right. Yes. That's important too. People do want to see themselves on the website. So if you're ha- if you're going to have pictures and you want a culturally diverse clientele, or you work with a culturally diverse clientele, or maybe you work more with just one culture, like a Latino, Latina, or African American, or Caribbean, or have that represented in some of the pictures that you display on your website. So that when people come, they feel, again, like not only, okay, not only do you actually work with the challenge I'm having, but you work with people like me. That's the same thing why, you know, if you say I work with kids, there should be some representation that you kind of get it, you know, because I don't want to take my my child to be treated like an adult. I want to know that you actually then incorporate things that are going to be uh, good for kids, right? You know, so yeah, I think I think representation definitely is very, very important on a website. Mm-hmm. And how many pages really need to be on the website to make it a good website? Because mm-hmm. in my mind, I don't build websites, Camille. So just entertain me for a second. Like that, when you describe that first page, I'm like, bet first page, click to the therapist. Hey, sign up, and a bunch of options to click and sign up. Like, how many pages? Yes. Because that's overwhelming, too, for me. When I think of a website, you got to do like 25 pages to talk about. Right. No, you don't, you don't have to do that many, right? But um, here's what you want to think about. Um, first of all, depends on where you're located. So like if you happen to be in a smaller part of town, you may find that because, by and large, a lot of people know each other because it is kind of a smaller part of town, you may not need to have much more than maybe two or three pages, honestly, because people just want to know that you serve their need. That's the home page. People want to know who's going to provide it. That's the about me page or meet your therapist page. People want to know how to contact you. There you go. That's your contact page. And sometimes people also want to know fees and policies. I know that sometimes people are, you know, they have different opinions about that, but some people are very straightforward. They know their budget. They just want to know if they're going to be within budget. And so they would like to see an idea of what they might have to pay or what insurances you take. Um, If you happen to be in an area that is larger, where you can throw a stone and hit like 15 therapists with that one stone, you need to then think about how you're going to stand out. There's a lot of traffic online. How Mm -hmm. are you going to kind of uh, break away from the pack? you know, to to kind of like, you know, stand out a little bit. That's where you may want a website that has maybe a a space for a blog, um, space for a podcast. You know, um, you may want to have a a tab where you offer resources. So people come to you and they see that not only do you meet their need, not only do you, are you qualified, but, you know, and then you have, you know, a page where Maybe you explain a little bit about policies or fees or insurances that you take or or super bills that you give if you don't take insurance. But then you also have resources. So now you're really helpful. Now you go above and beyond. You don't have to do it. But who doesn't like to go (laughs) to a website and get something for free? Like it's like you go to a website and they have like... we don't do this in mental health. We're not giving away coupons, but you know, if you go to like a website and um, you need something like, I don't know, let's say you need clothes for your kids or something like that. And they have this, you know, sign up and we'll send you a free shirt. It's like, Ooh, okay. Like you're also giving, we love it. So that's another way to build interaction and connection and to like form a little bit of a relationship before they ever call your office. So that's where those things kind of come in where you may want to, if you're in a more, crowded area, you may want to have a website that has maybe about five pages. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I I would say, depending, you know, larger, larger area, more crowded area, um, probably about, about five pages, smaller um, part of town, more people know each other, then you probably don't do have to do as much to, to capture people. You almost had me, I mean, I was, I was right there, like smaller is better. (laughs) And then I was like, okay, well, I do like, you're right. I like a good coupon when I go to some pages, but <laughs> good to get like a resource to know that I got a takeaway. Yes. You're already helping me. And if you can provide me with this valuable bit, that's what I was going to ask you too. Like, cause I love, uh, you know, I can do a video, right? Mm-hmm. Like our videos common to put on, like, can you do video blogs instead of writing a blog out? Oh, like, absolutely. And then- mm-hmm. Absolutely. Sometimes you will. Now I know um, in our practice, we have, 
like written, we started, well, as we were expanding, I started doing things that I knew were going to build more connection and be more helpful. And so we started with writing, but we are um, working to move toward podcasts and really people, again, they like to see. So if you are, if you can do video, if you're comfortable with that, video gets a lot of interaction. And, you know, and just think about what we see right now. How many people have like um, their own little, I want to say like TV mini series, web series, you know, like on YouTube. I mean, there is there is so much with the visual that it's giving the regular television industry a run for their money because people, right. people are actually going to watch their show on on like YouTube or like Instagram stories and, and all this stuff. People are very visual and um, and yeah. they, they feel like they can connect if they can see more things. You know, the more we can actually use our senses in order to take in what somebody is talking about, the more connected we feel to them. And that also is like, to me, I'm thinking your way of standing out. Now, the other thing I always tell people, if you're not a video person, don't get in there and like throw up from anxiety and oh then post God. that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Right, right, right. Don't write or write. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Or if, if you got tips and bullet put, put them on there, yes. you know, but don't, don't step outside. Like you said a, a minute ago, your comfort and your peace, mm -hmm. like flow in your zone. Oh, yes. Say, absolutely. So that I will say, you're right. I, I, I agree with you hundred percent. Just stay, okay. stay in what works for you. Cause there are some writers who can write and create a picture in your mind and, and it works just as yeah. well as individuals who are. That's not me. But you build your connection with your, you know, with your podcast. And also like, I think like your, your Instagram is hilarious, but so, you know, like, you know, you know what? pause right. I got it. Say it again. Right. again. What, what is it? Your Instagram is hilarious. Because my team thing, I tell them, and I hope, listen, if Hallmark is listening, if Tyler Perry, I can be like, act, I know you out there in Georgia, tell Tyler I can be an extra. But I feel like I'm coming. It's babies. <laughs> I'm going for Hollywood. Right. I'm going for hard, cheesy. I'm going to be in the coffee shop. So funny, drink right? coke <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. I oh, tell them. They, they, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, and, it, and then it's important too. I'm glad you said that to have links to, cause that's how people look us up now. Yes. They will. Like, I mean, stop that. Let me stop it. That's how we look people up now. We go and do something. We go to a website. Yes. We go to social media. Absolutely. So it's good to have it all linked up. And I think that's key. Um, you said that's how we look people up. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. We have to switch our mind frame to ask ourselves, wait a minute, when I am actually looking things up for myself, for loved ones, for, for kids, what am I looking for? How do I go yeah. to websites and, and interact? You know, that gives you a lot of information about how to construct your own website. Take your gotcha. take yourself out of just the professional position and put yourself in the role of the client or the customer. I love that you said that because I, you know, I met some professionals recently and been asking the question, oh, you know, what's your social media? Oh, we don't have. OK. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like, well. It's the world is so busy and I know social media is so loud, but that's how we, I can remember to refer to you yes, too. Right. Yes. yes. And the same thing when people don't have websites. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I now I want, I, I, Camille, I'm already thinking, I want you to look at my website, but I, you know, what, be it as it may, like when you do that consulting, you may, you know, nah, girl, this ain't it. Right. But, <laughs> but for those just starting out, does it have to be, you know, fireworks and everything or it's just the idea of something up there so people know you're available. Yeah, it does not have to be fireworks. And remember, one thing that I think sometimes happens um, is that when we think website, we feel like we're competing with the whole entire internet and that I right. have to make sure I stand out above the whole entire internet. No, you don't. You just have to stand out in your area. People in New York are not looking for me over here in Georgia. <laughs> they're looking for people in New York and they're not looking at all in New York. Sometimes they're looking just, just in their one area, you know, just in Rhode Island or just in Brooklyn or wherever. So you don't have to beat out the whole internet. You just have to be a resource in your community. So, mm -hmm. you know, scale it down. Don't feel like this is going to be something that's insurmountable, right? You know, and if you are just starting, like you asked, what about people who are just starting out? Then all you need to make sure to do is have, I would say, have your picture up, 
make sure that you communicate that you work with certain challenges and that in some way in your copy, communicate that you understand the need or the challenge that they might be expressing in their day-to-day life. So parents who are looking for someone to help their child might be exhausted and they've tried everything that they knew to try. And now they feel like this is their last effort to help their child get better behavior. Um, If they happen to be a couple in in maybe um, marriage counseling or, excuse me, needing it, then it might be that maybe you are feeling tired of living like a roommate or you feel like your partner is now your roommate and you are Mm -hmm. feeling and you can go on about it because these are the things that people might be saying. And so Mm -hmm. you use that and you don't have to have a lot of pages to say that. And then, you know, have a page about yourself. Because again, once you've convinced somebody, hey, I do understand what you're going through, then people do want to know a little bit about you and then they want a way to contact you. Yeah. Okay. And then one of my last questions, Camille, what platform? Because we hear a lot of if it's, is it Wix? Is it, I forget the other ones. Uh, there's there's the Wix, WordPress. Squarespace, um, WordPress. Mm-hmm. There's actually a lot of good ones now. I mean, it's really between Wix, Square, um, Squarespace, and um, WordPress. Now, the websites that we do, we happen to work with WordPress and we happen to work with a specific theme called, uh, theme called Divi. But I would say for individuals who are more like do-it-yourselfers, you're probably going to want to look at like Wix or Squarespace if you want to do it yourself. Um, WordPress has a lot of ability that, and the reason why we use it is because it has a lot of ability to create like um, shops, stores, and you can all kinds of social media buttons and all kinds of email listings. And if I need to go in on the back end of somebody's site and tweak some things, I could um, as far as code and extra code that will give extra effects on the website. You can't really do that though with, um, with like Wix and Squarespace. There are people who can get on the back end I think you have to you have to look for those individuals. It's not just like easy for the user to just do that. But um, even outside of that, though, they now they have a lot of features. So again, if a person is like, I want to do it myself, I would probably recommend or Squarespace. Um, WordPress has a little bit more of a learning curve. If a person, though, is like, I would love a website because I know I need one, but I don't have the capacity right now with everything that's on my plate. I don't have the capacity to try to learn how to put my website together, whether it's Wix, Squarespace or WordPress. I don't have the time. I don't have the, Mm -hmm. the capacity. I need to focus on what I'm doing. And it's not that. Then I would say then you just want to find a good web designer. And um, so a good web designer is going to, uh, first and foremost, ask about the vision that you want to create, who you serve. They're going to have a couple of questions for you. Like you were talking about that, like you had a questionnaire is really long. Um, But, you know, they're going to they're going to ask some questions to get a better feel for uh, who you serve and how you want to be presented on the Internet so that they better understand, like the brand and the vision of your company. Okay, so, Camille, this is this is. I want to say this is dope information. I don't know why I had to say I'm saying that. And I really like that you are laying it out. Now, how can people get in touch with you to even learn, okay, look at my site or I just need help, period. How can they find you to get in touch with the Spectrum site? Absolutely. Sites? Okay. Real simple. They are going to, you can send an email, info at Spectrum Sites, S-P-E-C-T-R-U-M-S-I-T-E-S. Dot com and um, we're also on Instagram, so um, we're at Spectrum Sites, and you can reach us there as well. And then our website um, is just www.spectrumsites.com. Okay, and then do you review people's websites just to kind of see, like, okay, this is what we can do? Mm-hmm. Got it, yeah. okay, because I'll be calling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Camille, thank you so much for being a thank guest, you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I appreciate being here. Thank you. If you love this podcast, please be sure to rate and review. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host 
publisher or the guest are rendering legal, accounting, clinical, or any other professional information. If you want a professional, you should find one.